Welcome to another RDWorks Learning Lab. A little bit of unfinished business. There were some questions about whether or not this RDWorks that we use to program this machine was in fact strangling my pictures and my 3D engraving. The number of pixels that I was able to get out of the machine. It would appear that we were limited somewhere to around about 4 or 5 milliseconds for a pixel. Anything faster than that, and it would appear that the software is saying, ignore it, and it was doing its own thing. Now, just off screen here, I've got my laptop running, and on my laptop, I have hooked in a small USB oscilloscope called a Picoscope. It's going to be a bit like watching a blind man drive a Ferrari. This is not my field of expertise, so why the hell I bought it, I can't really tell you. I have played with oscilloscopes in the past, but... It was long before I had wrinkles on most of my parts. To make the electronics guys amongst you cringe a little bit, I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. Hopefully, it's very simple. And by very simple, I mean that's the only reason why I'm thinking of tacking it. And I don't know why I didn't think of it before, because I've had this thing tucked away in the cupboard for many months now, and um, originally I was going to try and use it to find out about high frequency impact engraving, but that was too complex a subject for me to get involved with, so it got put away. But here we are, basically what we're looking for are pulses out of the controller into the high voltage power supply, which says switch on or switch off to the laser beam. Now, that's all I'm going to be looking for, and I think it's as simple as that. So, today, another journey of discovery. You might see with my hair standing on end. Who knows? As I've said to you many times before, I never practiced this stuff. What you see me do is what you see me do, and I'm going to do it now, live. Now, here we are looking at the controller and the high voltage power supply. Now, trust me, I'm not going anywhere near the high voltage because these signals down here, I know, are only 5 volts DC because they're generated by this controller here. There we are, we've got a good, nice, tight connection in there for a ground wire. And I've just put that extension cable on there so that my ground, which on this thing here has got a little crocodile clip on it and stays away from anything else. And then this top terminal here, which is pin number two, is in fact the line that controls the beam on and the beam off. So that's a signal from the controller which says on off. And I'm expecting that to probably, I think it's an H there, so that probably means it starts at five volts and it drops to zero volts. We'll see when I turn the machine back on. I wasn't touching the machine with the power on. Now I've got my work dropped well away from the head here because I'm just going to run a program dry in fresh air. Um, it doesn't need to be doing anything other than running. And what I'm going to be doing is running a program which is basically 10 pixels wide at 100 pixels per inch and then I'm going to do a pattern which is the same physical size but is 60 pixels wide at 600 pixels per inch. And what we're then going to see is if we can detect any pulse rate difference between the signals that are coming out from the controller for 600 pixels per inch or 100 pixels per inch. Well, there's our picture, and that's not quite what I was expecting. Uh, bearing in mind I've got 10 pixels wide and 10 pixels deep. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. There's my 10 pixels deep. And what I'm obviously seeing there is the scan line turning on, off, on, off, as it does the 10 lines of pixels down the page. That doesn't help me with individual pixels at the moment. So. That's the first question answered. It's not the beam on off which is causing the pixels to pulse on and off. It must be the current driver for the beam that's controlling the pixels. So we need to look into this a little bit deeper now and um, 
I might have to stop for a little while and get some assistance from my good friend Chip Williams because the other line that goes in and controls the power is a bit more complex. It's what's called uh, a power width modulation signal, which basically means it's a, a, a frequency varying signal proportional to the voltage. And that's difficult to interpret on an oscilloscope. And so what I'm going to have to do is to try and find the values that are required for a small RC network that will filter out and convert those signals back into an analogue signal that I can see on the screen here. I've hit a brick wall. Now I've got to stop and uh, find a way around it. Well, it might not look particularly pretty, but I hope that's going to work. Well, let's turn the machine on again. Well, let's press the button and see what we get. Now I've set this just to sample one of those pulses at this moment in time and well that's not what I was expecting. This line along here, this red line, is the current, the signal that's driving the laser itself. And I've got it set to 15% power at the moment and we can see here, look it starts off at zero and as the cycle starts it starts outputting a power. A very steady power and here we've got the beam switching on so it does 10 pixels and turns off turns round comes back and does 10 pixels the other way but at no stage does this line change so first of all make sure that this system is working okay I've got 15% power set at the moment now this is a filtered system um, that's filtering the uh, power width modulation. So there's always going to be some residual of the 20 kilohertz uh, PWM signal moving around, I would think. And I suspect that that is what this is. We've got our 15% nominal, and sitting on top of that 15%, we've got uh, the, the remaining third of the PWM. Let me change the percent power to from 15%, I'm going to put it up to 55%, a significant difference. Now I'll just run the same thing again with the higher power. So I don't know where it's going to go, whether it's going to be up here somewhere or I'm expecting it to be higher. So we'll do run and try the same thing again. There we go. So as expected, the power has gone up to a different level. So if there were any power spikes for each pixel, they would be appearing here, but they're not. At the moment it's 25 millimetres a second. So I should see every single spike on there if it was power driven. I certainly don't like to peddle misinformation and uh, it would appear in this case my conjecture as to what was causing these spikes, my lovely pixels, is totally wrong. There's nothing on there that says pixels. It says constant power. We should be able to go into here and zoom in and if I take a look at the numbers across the bottom here and count the number of pulses across here, well I've just done a quick calculation and that definitely is the 20 kilohertz PWM signal, the residual of it. So it's back to the drawing board guys. I don't know what's causing my pixels. Well I'm just checking my grayscale here. It's 100 pixels per inch, just make sure I've got the right one. 9 and 68, so we'll do that. 25 millimeters a second. It's scanning and we're going to do X swing. Doesn't matter about the uh, the pitch. Okay, now we're going to try that 100 pixels per inch grayscale test that I did, and we're running this at 25 millimeters a second. On the basis of what we've seen so far, I shan't see any pixels happening. I shall only see step up and steps down. And it's exactly what's happening.
as it's scanning backwards and forwards across the swatch. Different grayscales, different powers. So there are no pixel pulses on there at all that are driving my little high spots. So they're not power pixels, they must be... When I tackled this problem first of all I thought that they may well be indication that the stepper motor was stopping and starting and stopping and starting and as you stop the stepper motor the power burns in deeper and then it starts off again and stops. Now, I discounted that at the time, but we can clearly see that these little pixels are definitely not driven by the controller. We're just going to go back on some of the work that we've done before, and clearly you can see that what I'm going to import here is a checkerboard pattern, but you can clearly see that what's been imported is just a mid-grey square. 50% grey because RD Works is interpreted as half grey and half white. Now the question that we asked and we're trying to prove was is this going to come out mid-grey or is it going to come out as individual dots? It looked on my acrylic pattern as though it was coming out as individual dots. Now we have the technology as we hooked up to the oscilloscope to verify what's going to come out of this pattern. Repeat trigger. You should see slight variations this time. So two things come out of this. We can categorically prove now that A, RD Works display definitely does not display what's happening in the real world. And this display shows us that we're getting an individual pixel punched every time because the pixels are separated. So let's go back to the solid black pattern that I started off with for pixels and we'll see what we get. And that is intended to be a solid black and sure enough it's 100 pixels per inch. In fact we found that we get the best results at 50 millimeters a second. And we ran that, well we can leave that at 30-30. We do not want output direct. Um, well, we could leave output direct on actually. Just see if that has an effect. Okay. Because I do believe I did those dots with output direct on. Okay, we're running now. So let's sample and see what solid black looks like. One, two, three, four. So that was 11 rows of black, but the power remained constant throughout. We could look at those sampling at about 20 milliseconds. Just look at the first one. So there's no hint of individual pixels being squirted up there, are there? I mean, it would be from there down to the ground and back up again. And this here is a scan and there's no pixels in between and there's no on and offs here to indicate individual pixels where as soon as we leave as soon as we leave a pixel gap between them we do switch the beam on and off on that basis by doing dotting we should see the beam we should see this blue line going on and off squirting individual dots down Okay, now this is a fairly coarse resolution picture and we're going to be starting at the bottom left hand corner there and working up the page. So we've got lots and lots of individual pixels, some little black groups, some single groups. We've got no idea what's going on with these shades of grey because as we've seen, uh, RD Works tells us fibs. We should see lots of blue lines going on and off, on and off, because this is not variation in power this is switching the beam on and off. Now those are individual scans going across there. Now I'll just stop that and we can probably zoom in on this. So we've got lots of individual pixels here and then two pixels, two pixels, looks like three or maybe four pixels. So again we've got this ability Provided there's a gap between them, 
to switch on and off and detect individual pixels. But if they're joined up as a black group, we don't get individual pixels. Well, for the sake of completeness, we're going to take a look at what's going on during proper grayscale engraving. And we can clearly see the scans taking place from scan to scan to scan in each direction. And then during that scan, we can see all these changes of power level taking place. So we are getting pixels that are being thrown out as different power levels. Now we could change the resolution of that so we could watch it differently. But obviously where it's black, you can hear it. So it's doing a black section there and then it's doing some engraving and then it's doing a background section just here. Well, there's been some good points and some um, bad points in this session. I somehow feel as though I've come away with uh, a little bit of egg on my face. Uh, yep. Most of what we've talked about over the past few sessions has turned out to be correct. With one exception. Black sections are not individual pixels. Something else is causing those individual pixel lookalikes. Now, I don't know what that is at the moment, but it certainly is not power, and it's certainly not switching on and off of the beam. That really only leaves us going back in a great big circle to where many people said I should be looking to start with, which is to the stepper motor, making incremental steps, which in turn is allowing the beam to stand still and burn a hole, and move on and burn another hole, and move on and burn another hole. How on earth am I going to prove that? We couldn't see any apparent motion, stop-start motion, on the head. But of course, my slow-speed camera, or high-speed photography, was very limited. Um, a piece of 50 quid kit that's not going to give me the answer. Now that I'm able to drive this little toy that I've got down here with, I wouldn't say confidence or competence, but I can get an answer and that's all we really need, answers. I've ordered myself an accelerometer so that we can take a look at what's happening to this head here. And that means we should be able to compare this head to the one that's over there. I've got so many other things I want to do to this machine, these little detailed things keep getting in the way, but unless we hit them on the head now, we'll have to come back and deal with them again. And I'll see you in the next session when maybe we'll be able to get to the real bottom of some of these little conundrums. Thanks again.